Welcome to the HBM Test and Measurement FAQ video series. Hi, I'm Bart Morick, HBM Applications Engineer, and in this video I'm going to provide a short description of how exactly a metal foil strain gauge works. Metal foil strain gauges have been used in ESA applications for decades, but we often get the simple question, how do strain gauges work? This short video will give you a quick presentation regarding the theory and operation behind the metal foil strain gauge. In the 1840s, Charles Wheatstone described the change of resistance that could be expected in an electrical conductor due to the effects of mechanical stress. In the 1930s, E.E. E. Simmons and A.C. Rouge were two engineers that simultaneously found a practical use for this theory of Wheatstone's and invented the strain gauge as we know it today. The engineering world initially found no practical use for the device, but production of airplanes began to ramp up because of World War II. Wings were cracking and solutions had to be found. The initial strain gauges were used to find the causes of design failures for new production airplanes. Here we have a picture of the first strain gauge made by Rouge. He took paper as a base layer for electrical insulation and glued a constantan wire to it. The meandering form was taken to get enough resistance. He made his first gauges with 120 ohms of resistance because in, in his university he found an instrument for his measurement that worked especially good if the starting resistance was 120 ohms. As no one found an important reason to change that, this became the standard of resistance used in stress analysis today. The production process begins with a metal foil that is thinly rolled to a layer size of 3 to 5 micrometers. As a point of reference, the average diameter of a human hair is 80 to 100 micrometers. The foil is connected to one side of a carry material. The other side of the metal foil is covered with a light sensitive layer. A photographic negative of the grid design for the gauge being manufactured is put on top and exposed to light. Where light goes through the negative, the meandering grid is hardened. In the development process, the non-hardened parts are washed away. The individual gauges are then separated from the sheets of gauges and tested to verify that they meet the specifications and a correction factor is defined. The principle of the strain gauge is this. A mechanical stress on a strain gauge causes a deformation of that gauge. Since the material is tightly adhered to the article under test, the gauge acts like the material that it is attached to. Here we have three examples. The original length of the gauge is defined as LO. By straining the object, the wire in the gauge gets longer and thinner, causing the resistance to go up. By compressing the gauge, the wire in the grid gets shorter and fatter, causing the resistance to go down. Strain is defined as a change in the length of the object divided by the original length of that object. Because this change is typically very small, the value is measured in micrometers per meter. Here we have another view of the same thing. The strain gauge is a piece of wire. Without strain, it maintains its original length and resistance. With a positive strain, the resistance goes up. And with a negative strain, because of the changing geometry of the wire, the resistance goes down. Now, this change in resistance is really very small, so it is difficult to measure that change using just an ohmmeter. So an amplifier circuit using the Wheatstone bridge and a high gain is used to convert this change into a change in voltage which is then converted into strain value through a normalization process. So in conclusion, the manufacturing process required to build a metal foil strain gauge is rather labor intensive. A change in length in the gauge causes a change in resistance which in turn is measured by an amplifier into a change in voltage which is then converted back into a value for a change in length of micrometers per meter or microstrain. The basic design hasn't really changed that much in the last 75 years. The strain gauge is going to continue to be the go-to sensor for experimental stress analysis for decades to come. Well, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please feel free to call, email, or visit our website for the latest product solutions and downloads at www hbm.com